This type of software business could be 10 times bigger than SaaS in the next few years. I'm talking about AI agent apps, basically apps with an AI agent built into them that have memory and can perform tasks for you. And in this video, I'm gonna break down exactly what an AI agent app is, how you can come up with ideas to build your own AI agent app, and how to get started building an AI agent app using AI tools. If you don't know me, my name is Chris, and for the last 15 years, I've been designing apps and advising startups on product and design. And with that said, let's break down AI agent apps so you can start building yours. Build great product. Build great product. So I think AI agent apps could be even bigger than SaaS over the last 10 to 20 years. AI agent apps basically represent a new opportunity for applications in the AI space that leverage AI to actually provide people a way of interacting with AI agents directly in the tools that they're using and creating new tools for those AI agents to exist in as well, and giving them things like memory and context and all of these kind of abilities to be able to perform tasks for you. So the easiest way that I can think to explain this is think about something like Cursor, which is basically an AI agent inside of a code editing tool. So you have a code editing tool where you can write your code in your project, and then Cursor adds an AI agent on top of that to help write the code for you. And the AI agent can interact with everything that's in that tool in your project. And it also has access to other tools outside of that code editor as well. So this is the power of AI agent apps. And so I wanna talk first about how AI agents work and then go through what an AI agent app is, how to think about coming up with ideas for AI agent apps, some examples of AI agent apps that exist at the moment, and then how you can actually get started building an AI agent app today using AI tools. And so if you don't know what exactly what an agent is, simple way to understand what an AI agent is, is it's basically made up of these four parts. So an AI agent is an AI model. So that's like ChatGPT or Claude. That's the way that it thinks. It has instructions, and this is a prompt, what's called a system prompt, that tells the AI model how to behave. So this would be like, you're an expert, a senior code developer. You know, you are good at writing code, basically. So it gives it a framework and a set of instructions. Think about a platform like Lovable, for example. Lovable is an AI agent in a web application that writes a very specific type of code for you. It writes front-end code in specific languages. And so the instruction prompt for Lovable is basically going to be something like, you are a senior engineer who has expert level knowledge of these frameworks, React, Next.js, all of these kind of coding frameworks. And your job is to create an app for the user based on what they want and to solve bugs and do all that stuff. And that's the instructions you're giving to the agent. You have memory, which is basically what the AI is able to reference, what the AI already knows about what is going on. This is the context that gives it superpowers, it can understand what is going on. It might have a document as memory, for example, and so it can reference things from that document. It might have a web page as memory. It might have chat history as memory, so it knows what you've done before. And it's using that to perform an action to do its task, which are in the instructions. You also have tools, which are basically external pieces of software that the agent can use to complete its task. The instructions or the task that you're giving it might ask it to read the information on a website, in which case the tool that the AI agent could use there, if you've connected it, is a web scraping tool that would scrape all of the information from that website. It would go out and do that. The best way to think about how an AI agent operates is basically that the agent works like this. It works in a like circular way until it has completed the task and then it has an output which is based on the task that you gave it. Instead of an LLM will just give you a direct response to one question, which is not how an agent will operate. The agent will continuously work until it has completed the task. So that's what an AI agent is, and most AI agents are basically presented to us in these kind of chat interfaces because that's how we're familiar with using them. They work on natural language, and so we're basically chatting back and forth, almost in like a side panel in a lot of the applications that use AI agents at the moment. So what is an AI agent app? Well, basically an AI agent app is kind of exactly that. You have a user input into your app, you instruct the agent to do something for you, 
and then the AI agent will do something for the user in the app. For example, in the cursor example, you instruct the coding agent in cursor to write or build an application for you. The agent will then build that code inside cursor, inside the app, and then it will output the application that it's built for you and all of the code that it's written. And then you put your input back in and you kind of go around working with the agent almost like an employee to achieve a certain outcome or complete a specific task. The way that agents often exist in applications at the moment, similar to how I, what I was talking about before, is that they'll basically be like a side panel on the right hand side here. And this will be your agent basically, and this will be your application. And you can definitely think about it like this as well if you wanted to, but you might wanna introduce a different way of interacting with the agent in your application as well. You could interact with it with any number of different ways. And so how do we come up with ideas for agent apps? The way that I like to do it is to think from first principles. So first principles is about the fundamental things that we know that are true and breaking out of any sort of preconceived knowledge about the way that we think things should work. So because we're so familiar with technology and software and apps, we think about an application should be a set of inputs, a text field, some buttons, some interface, some text, some images. But actually, when you go back to fundamental truths, the fundamental truth really is, I'm a person who is trying to complete a task, and what is the best way for me to complete that task using the technology that's available for me? And I think now with AI agents, the answer isn't always going to be like, fill out a series of forms and click a button. The answer is going to be like, can I just ask for the thing that I want? And can the agent go and create that for me. Now it sounds like very difficult to set this stuff up. So I'm gonna go through how to actually build like an AI agent app later. And it's not actually as difficult as you think. So the way of thinking about this from first principles would be like the old way here is like me manually searching for information in the document. The new way is just asking for the answer from my AI agent. If I have that technology available, and the AI agent already knows all of the information about this subject, I should be able to just ask the agent, what's the answer to this question? And it will go, oh, the answer is this. I already know that. And so that's why he would be able to tell you the answer. The old way for like creating a song or writing music might be like writing it on pen and paper, playing the instruments. And then the new way could be just asking for your song idea to be output or asking for a certain type of cymbal sound or asking for a certain type of instrument. This isn't necessarily the best way because for like the more creative stuff, there's still this question mark around like, what is creativity? And for something like a music production app, it's still kind of vague as to like, you still might wanna have a mix of these different creative kind of disciplines. Like I still wanna play the instruments myself, but I also wanna be able to add in all these extra things and not have to like go and find someone to play a certain instrument or go and find someone to sing in a certain way or like hire all these different people or hire someone to do the mixing and the mastering of your song. Sorry, I'm going into more detailed like music stuff here because I also produce music on the side as well, which is why I'm interested in this idea. But that's the kind of way of thinking about it. Or like in the cursor example, again, would be like writing the code myself to like asking the agent to write the code for me or to build the app for me, not even to write the code for me. But another way of thinking about this is like, what is the quickest path from problem to solution with the available technology? Maybe not even the quickest, maybe it's like the quickest or the best. What is the quickest or the best path from the problem to the solution with the available technology? And so ask yourself, because an AI agent is a chat interface primarily, it doesn't have to be, but most of the applications, it will be some sort of a chat interface where you're talking back and forth with the AI agent and it has the memory and the context of the app that it's working in. Ask yourself, who would I talk to help me solve this? That is the kind of persona of the agent that you would create and how would they then help me? What tools would they use? What output would they give? And this will create the foundation for your AI agent application idea. Quick break in the episode to talk about my community for people who are building apps with AI and want to actually launch their app and get real customers. It's called the AI App Builders Academy. So if you're building an AI app with Bolt or Lovable or Cursor or any of these AI tools and you actually want to make a profit and launch your app, then this is the community for you. Inside, you'll get access to a community of other builders as well as my 30-day app course helping you go from idea to app to a profitable launch in just 30 days. You'll also get access to weekly calls with live workshops and training, as well as all of my startup frameworks and resources and 24 seven support from the community to help you answer any questions or problems you're having with building and launching your AI app. 
So if you're building an app with AI and you actually want to make a profit and launch your app, then head over to school.com forward slash AI apps to find out more. I'll see you there. Examples of AI agents that exist at the moment. So Dia is like a web browser that has an AI agent chat on the side and you can chat with your tabs to find information, to compare different products, to find a better price for something, to search the web and find other information related to what you're looking at, to create content and create ideas off of the back of tabs or web pages that you've got open. Cursor is, like we said, it's a code editor that codes for you. Dia is a web browser you can chat to. Lovable is a, a web application that builds apps for you. This is all going from like you doing the thing yourself to you directing someone, an agent, to help you complete that task or to do it for you entirely. And so your idea is basically just a tool type that does the agent functionality. That seems vague, but for example, a document editor that writes articles for you. Imagine like a specific AI agent that has specific instructions based on your knowledge about writing blog articles, for example, the format that those articles should be, the way that the wording should be structured and that the copy should be written. Like create those instructions, connect the agent to the right tools and let it write the articles in your app and help people write articles even better, even faster. A music production tool that mixes songs for you. So instead of me having to do all the mixing, all of the detailed mixing, the compression, the limiting, the EQing, all of that stuff on my music myself, the AI agent will help me mix my song for me. It will diagnose issues in different frequencies, all of that sort of stuff. So that's the way to think about it. So think about what is something that you do or what is a task that you do? What is an outcome that you would like? And then the agent is the person you would speak to help you do that. And so that's how that's the framework for thinking about building an AI agent app. Okay, so you might have an idea now. You've got a rough starting point for like, what is an AI agent application? And I think this is such a huge opportunity because currently 99% of software does not have agent functionality. And there is a massive gap in the market in the application space for problems that can be solved with AI that haven't been solved yet because it was never financially viable to build that software. And the software that is going to fill that gap is going to be AI agent apps. And so that is a huge opportunity to build in right now. And I think over the next few years, you're going to see loads and loads of these apps coming out with AI agents built into them that are going to help people do work and complete tasks and live their lives even better. So how do you build an AI agent app? Well, when you're building an AI agent app, you actually have two routes to building an app that has an AI agent in it. The first, I'm going to go through this bottom one first because this is the more simple approach to do it. So the first would be to build an agent with a workflow builder like NAN. You can build an AI agent in NAN that you can give instructions to, you can connect to memory, you can give it tools, and you can basically set the trigger as a webhook. So build your app and then connect the agent with webhooks. And what I mean by that is when you build your app, you may might build like a chat, a side panel in your app that's the agent. And then when the user submits a message, that message would get sent to the webhook URL. That webhook URL and that message would be picked up by like NAN, where your agent lives. The agent would then process that message. It would then perform tasks and then output something that goes back to the agent chat. Or you could just create an agent that goes and does tasks for you. So if you're building an agent that is just performing a set of tasks, say it's like a personal assistant agent that will write an email for you, schedule that email or send it to someone using Gmail or write a Google Doc or add an event to your calendar. Basically, you can build that agent in NAN and then you can connect it to your app using webhooks so that when I ask my agent in my app and say like, can you create a calendar event for this person and then send them a message to say that you've added the calendar event, the agent in NAN will then get that message and then it will go and perform those actions using those tools that it's connected to. And you can do this using any AI app building tool. The only downside with doing this is that this approach isn't always the best if you want to scale. And by scale, I mean grow to hundreds or thousands of customers because basically you're going to be paying a lot more to run an agent inside NAN than you would be paying and this is in AI usage, in like API usage, basically. You're going to be paying more to run an agent inside NAN than you would be 
if you took this second approach, which is to build an agent directly into your backend code. And there's only a couple of ways that you can really do this. You can't really do this if you're using something like Lovable or Bolt, because the backend in those apps is going to be in Superbase. Now, there might be a way to do it with Superbase, but for now, I think the two easiest approaches to building an agent into your backend code, that means that you're going to have to basically have access to all of your code for your app, including the backend. So you can't use something like Superbase really in this instance. You're going to either have to build your code base using a coding tool like Cursor or Claude Code to build everything from scratch in a coding tool. And I would highly recommend using the OpenAI Agents SDK, which is a software development kit which basically is a very easy way of building an AI agent into your project. It's written in Python. So Python is like a coding language. And if you give the URL for the OpenAI Agents SDK to the code editor, to the AI coding tool that you're using, it will use that documentation to build the agent inside your application for you. The second approach here that I really like to build AI agents is build your agent into your backend code using a full stack app building tool and the best option out there at the moment, this is something that I go over and over again on like all of my videos because I feel like this tool is like super underrated and not many people are paying attention to it because it isn't as user-friendly. It's a little bit more complex, but it's the only really decent AI app building tool for full stack applications that will build your backend code into your code base and can build AI agent functionality and that is to use something like Leap and then deploy that using the Encore platform. I go over this tool over and over again because I think it's a super good tool for building really complex apps. This video is not sponsored by them. I'm saying that because it's something that I use all the time to build agent apps. And those are the kind of main ways that you can build an AI agent app. And I wanna just highlight something before we finish up here, which is the power of context plus chat. So here's why I think this is such a huge opportunity. ChatGPT and other LLM chat tools, AI tools, basically give users too much freedom. It's kind of like an open chat window that says, ask any question to ChatGPT, and you can do whatever you want. The problem with that is that most people don't know the best way to ask the right question. And actually the output is really dependent on the type of question that you ask and the type of prompt that you put into the AI chat window. There's a massive gap in creating that user experience, that context around the chat. So the secret power for AI agent apps is that it adds this user experience and context layer on top of these AI tools like ChatGPT and Claude. It basically says, how can I take ChatGPT, give the user like the context of the problem that they're trying to solve, and then create an agent that can, using ChatGPT or whatever AI technology that can solve that problem for them, and also create a user experience that helps the user ask the right questions to the AI model. This is hugely powerful. So it's helping the user ask the right question using the right context, and that's memory and tools and instructions, basically. And so I think this is going to be a huge opportunity over the next three years. If you're building apps with AI and you want to take your idea or your app to the next level and really think about how can you build an app that is going to be massively profitable and be able to scale into a business, even if you don't know code, this is the framework to think about it build an AI agent app. And that is going to be the biggest opportunity over the next three years from my point of view. So hopefully you can see how big of an opportunity AI agent apps are and how you can get started building an AI agent app using these approaches and this methodology to find the right idea and then build your AI agent app using the right tools. Now this is definitely on the more complex side of AI app building. And if you do want support and you want to learn more about how to build AI agent apps, then you can check out my community over at school.com forward slash AI apps, which helps people build AI apps and then launch them and get paying customers. And I've been talking on a bunch of the weekly calls over there about how to build these AI agent type of apps. And I'd love to show you how to build yours. As always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Build great product. Build great product.